on behalf of the Dean and the ministry team at Newcastle Cathedral, welcome to a new way of worshipping. As a community gathering from many places, yet one in faith and hope. In these unprecedented times, we are having to learn to do things differently. We hope and pray that these daily reflections will bring comfort, support and a sense of community to all who care to join us. The Lord be with you. Wherever you may be, try to find a still place, a safe place, a place where you can take a moment to pause in body, mind and spirit. Remember that there are many others, both near and far away, pausing and praying with you in this moment too. Let us pray. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Having stilled and prepared ourselves to hear God's word for us, let us listen to the Gospel reading appointed for today. Mark chapter 7, verses 24 to 30. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first. For it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Remembering that the word of God is living and active, let us now reflect on what God might be saying to us today through this passage of scripture. Today's reflection is offered by the Dean. I reflect that we live in a culture that seems <clears throat> addicted to binary thinking, to polarisation. On every issue we face, we see argument and counter-argument, and too often, if you're like me, you can feel cornered into making a decision that lands you on one side or another. We can be forced sometimes into seeing the us and the them defining our positions, not for what they are, but against someone else's position. I reflect that we live in a culture where <clears throat> sitting on the fence is seen as a derogatory term for people with no backbone or courage. A culture where changing your mind is a sign of weakness. U-turns are nothing but a forced failure or admittance of it and where being decisive is seen as the strong good and positive way and compromise is no more than a dirty word. I reflect that we live in a culture where public debate struggles with complexity, with paradox, with equal truths or truths that uh, live in the same place but can be different with evolving understanding and learning. I remember 
that when I was 10, I thought girls were boring, but I changed my mind at 12. And nuance. So I was fascinated to read a little book by Pope Francis called Let Us Dream. Its subtitle is The Path to a Better Future. And though I'm sure the Pope Francis doesn't need me to give him ideas, it was great to read some bits of it that resonated with these early reflections. <clears throat> he says this, So we have two temptations. On the one hand, to wrap ourselves in the banner of one side or the other, exacerbating the conflict on the, on the other to avoid engaging in conflict altogether and denying the tension involved and washing our hands of it. His introduction or discussion tries to bring together some thoughts on the difference between approaching issues by looking for contradiction or contraposition. Contraposition acknowledges that there may be other views equally valid, equally interesting, equally stimulating. Contradiction says my view is the only one. His prescription for the diagnosis to that is summed up in a phrase that he loves in the book called overflow. Overflow. Allowing the space and the opportunity for grace to overflow. Such overflow of love happens above all, he says, at the crossroads of life, at moments of openness, fragility and humility, when the ocean of God's love bursts the dams of our self-sufficiency and so allows for a new imagination of the possible. I love that phrase, that this breaking of the dams of our self-sufficiency, our decisions, our thinking that we're right, allows us for a new imagination of the possible. Today's gospel, I think, is indeed a real example of that overflow in action. Jesus meets the Syrophoenician woman. She is yearning for help for her daughter. The report seems to suggest a rather difficult discussion, certainly from Western eyes. Yet at a deeper level, there is a collision of cultures and thinking, an understanding of mission and of us and them, you and me, privilege and outsiders. Contradiction becomes contraposition. Could it be, just be that this tiny pericope, this tiny passage, right at the centre of Mark's Gospel, is a breakthrough moment of overflow, where through a deep, profound encounter with this woman, who is alien to his culture, and to his positions and understanding, opens the mission of Christ to a new overflow of God's grace, a widening of understanding that his mission of redemption is of course for the people of Israel, but is also for all people. And I ask myself, how would overflow in this way work in, in my world? With whom ought I ha to have meaningful encounters that will challenge my binary understandings? How might I make myself open to a contraposition or contrapositions in a way that offers me a different way of looking and knowing and feeling? And how will I allow a human encounter to help me reimagine and allow God's grace in love to flow through me 
and my self-sufficiency, or at least my perception of it, into an imagination of a new and better possibility. It's a wonderful passage. I think it's far more significant than we give it credit. For in it, I think, the whole mission of Christ is reassessed and overflows with grace. Amen. Take a moment, press pause if you want, to reflect on what, if anything, struck you during today's reflection. Were there words of comfort? Were there words of challenge? And now, remembering that all are precious in God's sight, let us pray. Lord, we bring before you those who feel forced into difficult and unfair decisions, who can't hear the voices of others speaking to them, who cannot assess and reflect upon others' opinions or note their beating hearts. Give to these people the courage to listen with all their being and what we ask for them, we pray for us too. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we bring before you today those with whom we profoundly disagree. Opinions, actions, ways of being, personalities. So many things cloud our understanding of others. We ask that you may open our hearts to see in them your image to hear what they have to say and to seek not to combat but to understand. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we pray for ourselves today that you may give us the courage to widen and make more hospitable our hearts and our beings and to give us courage, courage to change, courage to compromise, courage to understand, but above all courage to proclaim and serve your kingdom in our world. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Almighty God, by whose grace alone we are accepted and called to your service, strengthen us by your Holy Spirit and make us worthy of our calling. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and always. Amen. Let us dwell 
in the peace and protection of God, this day and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Now that we have entered lockdown three, our pattern of daily reflections has had to change once again. On Wednesdays, the short reflection and prayers will be offered in the context of a service of choral evensong, which you can follow here on YouTube at 5.45pm or watch at your convenience later. Reflections on the other weekdays will retain this format. We hope that you do continue to find them inspiring and helpful in your worship and prayer life. <laughs>